So, let's configure the K-Sphere. It needs tuning. To tell you right up front, uh, this is pushing the limits of what can be done with this design of this case feeder. If you're not aware, uh, the case feeder designed by Dylan was an afterthought. They never designed a case feeder for the 550. Then they came out with a case feeder you've seen, HGN, which is, was an afterthought. And then Dylan themselves has never produced anything besides pistol cases because they could not get rifle cases to run reliable. So keep that in mind. Um, the fact that someone created this case feeder, got it working on 9mm, it's awesome. They posted the step files, which a lot of people go in there and modify this. I brought this into Fusion. I'm going to post all those files. Uh, I initially thought I could do this for 308, but uh, with this design, I can't get the timing right. So this is 6.5 only, 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, I have seen a video of the Dylan uh, case feeder modified to fit. 308 so someone can probably do it i'm going to post all my files if you, you guys want to improve on this design please do i am not going to say like yeah this is the best design ever um it's the design we got right now so improve on the 6.5 create other rifle calibers if you can uh share and uh you know support the 3d community and sharing files if you do take the files and modify them please post up the you know your fusion files your solidworks uh, post them up there so with that said this does work. Doesn't work as well as I'd like to, um, but it works good enough. And uh, there are some compromises. Uh, but tuning is everything. So I have created a modified case feeder body. We have the case room guides. I have my own uh, case ram, uh, case feeder guide here, which guides the ram and my own bridge, which is up here. So we'll start with the parts. So the bridge I modified to make the hole bigger to fit the rod here and to take this hole and push it closer forward. On the actual case feeder, uh, I've moved change the shape of the ram, the position of where the screw enters the ram, and I've elongated the front of the case feeder body. Um, so those are primarily the modifications I've made to that. The ram shape, um, I've changed, I've made some clearances, changed the profile in the rear, shortened the timing in the front, I took off some extra material that didn't need to be here once I shorted the timing to get more clearance with the case feeder guides. So, we've got a lot going on here with bare almost no room to actually make this work. So, at the, so the first thing is get this installed. So, the base here isn't completely flush with the base of the Dillon. It, there's the slightest overhang like it's barely point, point 0.1 inches at probably most a hundred thousands so don't push it flush pull it towards you a little bit which is going to do things it's going to help the timing it's also going to help this little pin down here uh, clear I had to reverse the pin initially the pin went through from the other side um, but I found that I had to put the pin on this side and when this came forward it made the room to clear it now, so first, get the base installed, put your RAM in your bridge, and obviously get your case feeder installed. Um, there's no pressure up here with the, uh, with the bridge. The bridge is sitting just flush on top of this. Get the bridge lined up with the base so you can drop your tube through. It's a 5 8 tube. I'll link the part. It's a half inch ID. I believe it's a 5 inch OD here. So first thing, get the bridge set up so those line up. Pull the base out a little bit. Then connect your guide. Next thing is, let's get it running so it's smooth. 
and then we can tweak it from there. So if you've got the case feed guide, should be close to the body, but they shouldn't be actually rubbing each other. So if you get them rubbing, this is the rotation of this is going to make a difference. Okay, so let's get that, take care of that. Next thing we do, you're going to have is the ram is going to hit. Okay. The way to adjust the ram timing is depending on how far forward the front of this guide goes, the closer forward to the press it goes, the closer the ram is. The further back it goes, the further away it is. So this just clears. And there's a little bit of rotation in this. So you can see that it is not completely straight on with the press. Yeah, best angle there. You can see it's at an angle, slightly angled towards the press, but just enough clearance, sorry, angled towards the case feeder, but just enough clearance that they don't touch. All right, so now that, yeah, that's a great view. Now we've adjusted the ram, so the ram will clear, and there, like I said, there is not a lot of space here where that ram is coming. And you can, I can, I can make it a little darker so you can see. So you can see that ram coming back. So get that, there we go. Get that so it clears. And I haven't adjusted this since I put this one in here. So it's the smallest, see all right, moved it, it cleared. I just pushed, turned the bridge. What I just did is I twisted the bridge because the bridge twisted backwards, it pulls the guide away from the press, twists it towards the press, pushes the guide towards the press. It does the same with the ram, it controls the ram position. So as you saw, when that suddenly cleared, it's because I pulled the top, the bridge away from the press and it corrected that timing so you can clear. And it is a tight timing. All right, let's make sure the press still cycles smooth. Yes, all right, that's important. If it's all chunky and lumpy, this is not going to work. All right, so we've got the ram timing down. The next timing here is the actual case feed. So there's not a tremendous amount of flexibility on a case. So assuming you've already set up your case feed guides, but you just need to make sure they work, tuck a case in there. Start running your case forward. And you want to make sure, you can see that pin. You want to make sure it clears and enters. Now, that is somewhat affected by the top of your case feed guide, but it's primarily affected by the bottom of the case feed guide. And the same idea as the top applies to the bottom. The closer the bottom is to the case feed guide, the closer it is to the press, the closer the ram is. So the ram follows the top and the bottom of the guide. So if we push the bottom closer, it moves the ram closer. We pull it further away, pulls the ram further away. So that changes the timing. If you go too, you can push it all the way forward, but you're probably never gonna get the ram to clear on the way out. And it's probably gonna bind right in here. So you'll just need to play with that. Like I said, right now that timing is pretty close. It clears and it's good. 
So you'll need to play with that until you get that aligned. So once you've got the ram clearing, your case clearing your die, there's one other thing left. And this is the part of this that I have not been happy with, but it's the best of what this has to offer. So that little bump, On the bottom of that ram. You can see the bump right there. So what this is, is when you push forward to see the primer, or if you don't see the primer, but you do have to push forward, it pushes the ram back further, which allows the case waiting to drop to drop. And I wish there was a way to get that case to drop just on the return stroke. When you get to here, couldn't figure it out. By adding this little bump, I was able to get it to drop about right here. So if you want to move your ram timing forward to move your case so it clears sooner, that means the reverse is true. Now you have to pull this back further to get this ram to come back further because you've now made this bump further forward for, for the rear road to drop that case. So those are relative to each other. Now, the one thing that become a problem is when you actually drop, are trying to, I'm getting you to see this could be a challenge here. It's relative to primer seating. Now that we're back, sorry, getting this to view that was near impossible. You can see the primer seating ram coming up. So, Depending on how far you have your case feeder guide forward or backwards depends on how far you have to push forward before that case is going to drop. So you could adjust it so far that you literally have to shove this ramp all the way forward. And in most cases you can't push this all the way forward because you've already seated your primer which would prevent you from dropping a case out of the case feeder. I have mine, ideally I have it set up that just as that ram is just about to break the plane, the case drops, which is fine because even when there's a primer on top, um, it's not even fully seated. You gotta go about here to at least to get it fully seated. Plus it's actually not high enough that if you put a case in there with a primer, you're not even making contact with the primer. So we've got to balance your ram clearance, which isn't usually too bad to figure out the timing of your case, and then um, the position of your primer seating relative to dropping a case out of the tube. So I hope that begins to make sense. You'll figure it out as you start playing with it. So I'm gonna actually show you this in action now. So just to recap, I'm sure you have your head spinning, that your bridge, your bridge position is going to affect your ram clearance relative to the top of the press. So you pull it back, the ram's gonna clear better. Push it forward, it's gonna clear less. Going down, the twist position of your guide for the forward, it's gonna advance your ram timing for the back, it's going to slow down your ram timing. We've got the little lump back here. If you go too far forward, your cases will not drop on your primer. If you come too far back, you probably gotta never make your 
ram timing to get your cage underneath that die. Plus, you gotta remember, it also affects your ram seating height, how far you have to push that handle forward before it drops a case. You can actually get this set up so much that you'd actually can't complete the stroke because you've already bottomed out in your primer. So you need to balance that. So you've got, we've got the bridge, we've got your case timing, we've got your drop case timing, and we've got the primer stroke timing. So you gotta balance those out. Once you actually get that all figured out, it works. So I'm gonna post a video of this in action. So check it out.